Good morning, everyone. Welcome to church this morning. Uh, if you haven't already, I invite you to come on inside, and we'll get those doors shut back there. And uh, please take a moment to find, find your seats, and let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship this morning. Our opening hymn this morning can be found on page 220 in your hymnals. And as you are able, please stand and let us join together in singing Angels from the Realms of Glory.
Good morning. My name is, whoop, I'm a little too tall there. <laughs> Uh, my name is Joan Sundstrom, and with me are Carol and Maynard Zenter. Uh, we have the privilege of lighting the Advent wreath today. Advent means coming. Jesus came to bring us salvation and has promised to come again. We light the Advent wreath to help us remember his birth and also to anticipate his triumphant return. Lord, we pray that your light may penetrate the darkness of our sin. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Amen. Let us worship God. Your face has shone upon us, O God, in the young woman who is with child. She will bear a son and name him Emmanuel, God with us. Your presence shall hereafter be a source of comfort and guidance to all that call on your name. Your footsteps shall accompany us, your breath shall give us new life, your arms will console us, and your hands will be there to welcome us home. You are a God for all seasons and give us all reason to worship your name. Continue to hear us, Lord, as we pray together in words you gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, as we forgive those. We forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. Good morning. Wow, I think they're asleep, Reverend David. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to Glenelg United Methodist Church. Our focus, whether you are in person or online, is to love God and our neighbors and to make disciples of Jesus Christ. My name is Denise Martin, and I am honored to be on staff here at Glenelg. Whether today is your first time visiting or you have been with us for, for a long time, we sure are glad you are here to worship with us this morning. If you're with us online, please take a moment to say good morning in the chat. We have Kathy on as your host today, and we sure are glad that you're with us this morning. Um, I have a few announcements, um, as it is the Christmas season. Um, Christmas dedications this year will support our church's food ministry, and you can see the newsletter about how to sign up and give. Um, you can be sure to pick up an Advent Christmas flyer in the lobby in the narthex, one, of our, um, one for your family and one to share with someone else. Uh, the Christmas cantata is coming up next Sunday on um, December 18th, and then followed by our children's um, Christmas play, so I hope that all will, will come and be a part of that afternoon, and we'll have lots of cookies in between, just so you know. Our Christmas Eve service will be, uh, we have two this year, we will have a 4 p.m. family service and a 7 p.m. communion and candlelight, and of course on Christmas Day, as it is Sunday, I hope that you will join us in your, maybe in your pajamas or comfy, and come as you are, dress up as much as you want, but 10.30 we will worship here in this beautiful sanctuary on Christmas Day on a Sunday. Uh, the angel tree, um, some names still remain for, um, so that we can help a lot of folks have a really nice Christmas. Though you can take an angel off of the tree, it's a sign-up genius. So um, you just use the link, you go in, you pick out whatever you want to, um, however you want to support the family. Gifts are due back this week, though. So it's a quick turnaround if you, if you go today, but um, Tuesday, if you could have your gifts here by um, Tuesday would be great. And thank you to everybody for all of your love and support. We are able to serve um, several families and make their Christmas extra special. So thank you for your love. I have the privilege of inviting up my, my announcement helper. Come on over here, Katie. So this is my friend, well, she's gonna introduce herself, but I must, this is Katie. And I am so delighted you get to be a part of announcements today, so thank you for, for helping Miss Denise out. I appreciate it. Here you go, dear. Hi, I'm Katie, I'm, and I'm going to tell you about Taco and a Movie Night. Taco and a Movie Night will be on December, December 18th at 4 p.m. On, on Sunday. It will be, we will be watching the star eating tacos and accepting donations for Camp Hope. All ages are or welcome adults, you may drop off your kids and go on a date. <laughs> and there you have it. So it must be. Thank you, Katie, so much. All are welcome. You can, you can stay, or as Katie said, you can drop off your kids and go out on a date. Um, youth, this is, this is us kind of supporting this. So all of my youth, I invite you to come be a part of that, help to serve our younger children. Um, it's a great movie. It'll be a great night. So thank you for that. You can find out even more information about all of these announcements and more by going to our website or checking out our weekly newsletter. And as we switch gears and prepare our hearts for a time of offering, I want to remind you that your gifts make an impact. It's an act of worship to the Lord and helps us to continue with all of these missions and ministries. There are several ways you can give through our website. Go directly to the giving page at glenlumc.org slash online giving. Um, if you are on church online, you can just click the, the tab there in the corner. Here in person, our wonderful ushers will come forward with the offering plates. 
there's the black metal box behind them. We have the secure mailbox out front. You can always drop your offering in the mail. Thank you for giving, and if you will join me and my family in giving generously today. Thank you. Thank you. Word. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. It is said that a picture is worth a thousand words, and we hope that our video speaks to you about the true spirit of joy that is Gumsey Preschool. My name is Kim Wisman, and I've been the preschool director for almost six years after having been a teacher for 15. In all, Gumsey Preschool has been a light to the surrounding community for almost 35 years. We presently offer an early childhood education experience to 92 children aged two and a half to five years. We have a staff of 14, including myself, our administrative assistant, Emily Hertzing, our bookkeeper, Laura Meyer, and 11 caring, dedicated, and passionate teachers. We cannot do what we do without the wisdom and support of the preschool board. The head of the board is Jan Lee, and she is going to talk to you about its members and their function. Good morning, everybody. Morning. It is an honor and a privilege to be a part of the preschool board. The preschool is a mission of our church that brings a great education and Christ to so many young minds. The preschool board is a group of about 14 people. Uh, I'm the chair and Gail Pfeiffer is the vice chair. Kim, of course, director is part of the board. Uh, our secretary is Beth Goodwin, who does a wonderful job. And our treasurer, bookkeeper, is Laura Meyer. The other members of the board are two church members, plus we have a teacher representative and three parent representatives. We also have a representative from the trustees who help us tremendously. Uh, the board does a lot in discussion, working on uh, discussing the calendar, going over the calendar of events. And also, uh, we want to point out that part of what the preschool does is also giving back as mission work back to our church. They, they join the church with a lot of fundraisers and fun activities. So it, it's a great coexistence. Uh, would any of the members of the preschool board or the staff that are here today please stand? We've got quite a few here. Let's give God thanks for them. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everybody. And we will be in the narthex after the service if you have any questions. Well, thank you, Jan. Thank you, Kim, for your great job and leadership. And thank you to all who help with our preschool. It is a ministry of our church as it uh, does give back to our community in amazing, beautiful ways. So again, if you'd like to know more, see Jan or Kim, and uh, maybe you have kids or grandkids that would like to be a part of it, or maybe you'd like to help out on the board. So God bless uh, our preschool. Let's stand for the doxology. Source of life and bringer of life to the nations, you provide for all our needs. We bring our gifts in response to your goodness. We thank you for sending Christ into our midst. Use what we offer to enlighten all people to the church for your salvation. 
and bless all of our endeavors as we seek faithfully in Christ's name to your to do your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And you may be seated. And at this time I would like to call forward the children if you want to come up here and join me. Good morning. Good morning. Just be careful of that candle, you know, it's real light. Actually, why don't we scoot down a little bit? Yeah, let's do that. And y'all can sit down here too if you want. Just be careful of that. Okay, good morning. Oh my goodness, look at all of your beautiful faces. I am so excited to see you this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, it is a great day to see you all. I'm so glad so many faces were here to see that wonderful video, Miss Kim, of all, of all of the kids that are here during the week when you guys are not. This church is filled with children just like you. Uh, before we hear about today's message, I thought we should take a journey back to last week when we talked about the book of Isaiah. And the prophet Isaiah foretells a story about Jesus' birth. And it was about mm, 730 years before Jesus was even born that Isaiah had this prophecy. He had this, his, this thought about a Savior. And Jesus is the Savior, right? Jesus is God's rescue plan for, for all of us, for yesterday, for today, and for tomorrow. And so I wonder if there is a time in anybody's life where something was really, really difficult and you needed rescued. Anybody ever need a rescue plan? Anybody ever been out to sea in your boat and you didn't have an oar? Yeah, I heard that. <laughs> now that is surprising. <laughs> I love life, just so you know. <laughs> well, there have been many times in my life where all of a sudden I really have, actually there was that one time in a boat, but we'll talk about that another time. I, there have been many times in my life where I have needed rescued in a way that, in a way that I was either really sad or I wasn't sure what I was going to do or I wasn't sure what my next step was or something really sad happened in my life. And though God has given me many people in my life to love me and to su support me and to be there for me, sometimes there are moments in our life that only God can show up for us, right? Like he gives us all this support but it's, we have to remember that God's rescue plan for us is Jesus. And when we know Jesus by talking to him and praying with him and talking to him, talking with, about him to other people, that is how we build our relationship with him. And when we know Jesus, when those dark moments come, we know that we are going to be okay because God has a plan for our life. He rescues us through the love of Jesus. And so if ever there is a time no matter what it is in your life, because we all think differently, if there is ever a time in your life when things don't seem to be going right, you have to remember a couple of things. You ready for this? Life Lessons by Miss Denise. Here it is. God's given you lots of people to love you in your life, right? A mom, a dad, a grandma, teachers, all of your church family here, and also God has given you Jesus. So I always used to think about Mason when he was a little boy, and now you're not that little boy anymore. It feels like every Sunday, Mason would come in my office. I'm going to tell you a rescue story really quick. Are you ready? This is from when Mason was little, more like more real, real, like little, little. You would come in my office every week and be like, Miss Denise, can I please have a lollipop? And I would say, yes, Mason, you may have a lollipop. And then you would say, may I have two lollipops? And I would say, Mason, you can have one lollipop. And your world crumbled in that moment. Every week, every week it would crumble, right? But then you were okay. You got to the next day and you were like, oh, wait, can I just have another lollipop? And the answer was yes, you can have a lollipop. So it doesn't matter what you think is happening in your life. If your world is crumbling over a lollipop, you know God has given you all that you need to get through that moment, right? So just remember that, that our rescue plan is Jesus. Okay? Um, let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for providing all that we need, no matter what our circumstances are, whether we need an extra lollipop or our hearts are just really broken. Lord, you've given us Jesus, and we thank you for that. Be with us this week and help us to shine your light everywhere that we go. In your name we pray. Amen. You all may go to Sunday school if you wish.
Thanks, kids. Thank you all. Yeah, you can leave that with me here. Yep. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. Well, as we transition to the, to the message today, we've been in a sermon series uh, all about Christmas. The sermon series uh, is the best gift of all. And so as we prepare for Christmas as a church family and as individual families, and as we retell the Christmas story together, we are celebrating Jesus, the greatest gift that the world has ever known. It's the third week of Advent, so uh, this third week of Advent, we're going to head to the book of Luke, to the Gospel of Luke. We're going to look at Luke chapter 1, where we find Zechariah and Elizabeth and, and Mary, right? Great uh, characters in this Christmas story. Now, to start, uh, just a little background. So Elizabeth and Zechariah, if you remember the story about them, they're a little bit older in their years, and they've been married for a while, and it seemed impossible for them that they'd ever have a child of their own. They'd been praying for that, hoping for that, but uh, they hadn't yet been uh, given that gift of a child of their own. But one day an angel comes to Zechariah and tells him that he's going to have a son and that the son would prepare the way for the promised Messiah, Jesus. The angel also came to visit a young woman named Mary, who was Elizabeth's cousin. Now, no one would expect, have expected, not even Mary herself, that, that God was about to use her to bring about the promise of the Messiah. And Mary, if you remember the story, was awestruck when the angel came to announce that she was about to have a child who would be the Savior of the world. If you and I want to be awestruck like Mary this Christmas, then we may need to prepare a little differently this year. If we want Christmas to be different for us this year, if we want to, to better experience the awe and the wonder of the season and truly encounter the best gift of all, we must prepare differently. So as the Bethel girls come up to, to, to read, well, I say girls, the ladies, I should say, the ladies come up uh, to, to read. Go ahead and get out your Bible and open up to Luke chapter 1. We're going to look at verses 26 through 38. This is Mary's story, Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. And as the ladies read, I want you to listen for what this passage teaches us about how to prepare differently to receive the greatest gift of all. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in the Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored women. Woman, the Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary wondered what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, but how could this happen? I'm a virgin. The angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. What's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say she was barren, but she has conceived a son and is now in her sixth month. For the word of God will never fail. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. Then the angel left her. Amen. Thank you, ladies. You know, on, on CNN a, a few years ago, I was uh, watching, and it, the CNN reporter was, uh, had a, uh, was telling a story. They had a, a, a woman on uh, to interview by the name of Jennifer Wilson. Now, Jennifer was an author. She had just written a book uh, a couple years ago when this was on called Running Away to Home, to Home. And the story is about her family's journey to Croatia 
in search of who they are and where they came from and what really matters. So Jennifer and her husband, they sold everything that they had in, in one big yard sale, and then they moved with their two young kids to Croatia to live on the ancestral homestead of, of Jennifer's family and to escape the overscheduled, overcommitted, hectic pace of life that they were living here in the States. You know, and just last week I was in the, in the Wall Street Journal, I was reading about a guy who grew tired of just the, the office life that he was living in the city. And so he ended up returning to, to Somalia, to, the, to his birthplace, and took up the ancient trade of camel herding. Right, so all of these people doing something different. They, they need this need to like change things up and to, to redefine the American dream um, and what it's all about. You know, I think that, that theme seems to be running through the veins of, of a lot of people these days. I don't know if you've heard about it since the pandemic. Uh, there are record numbers of people who are quitting their jobs in search of a better way to live they're ready to do things differently. Maybe God is trying to tell us something. This Christmas, I believe God is calling us to reevaluate how we are living so we can prepare differently this year. So three things I want to share with you today. The first is this. Preparing differently means that we practice restraint. You know, it's a false assumption that that abstinence and virginity were part of the norm for Mary's day and age. Truth is, the, the Roman culture was very promiscuous, and in fact, even the Jews weren't as self-restrained as you might think. But Mary was different. She knew that sex before marriage was not God's way, and she shared herself, she saved herself for her husband and for God. In a culture that was giving in to want and desire, Mary was willing to practice restraint. And because of her restraint, she was better prepared to be used by God in the most amazing way. You know, we live in a very promiscuous culture today too, but promiscuity goes far beyond just sex. Promiscuity is a self-control problem. It's a problem with self-restraint. We live in a culture that assumes if, if we want something, we should have it. If it feels good, tastes good, looks good, we should indulge. And even, Chris, and, even, uh, and even Christmas for many has turned into a holiday of self-indulgence rather than a celebration of Jesus. We overindulge in gifts, food, drinks, spending, and other avenues of decadence, all in the name of the Christ child. And we pay the consequences, don't we, for this unrestrained lifestyle. Debt, obesity, addiction, stress, busyness, exhaustion, unmet expectations. But perhaps the greatest consequence and irony is that when we fail to practice restraint, we end up denying ourselves the very thing that we desire the most. The true fulfillment and pleasure of a life lived with and for God. We, are, we deny ourselves the opportunity to be used by God because we've let ourselves be used up by other things. Are you allowing your life, your energies, your time or your family to be used up by less than the most worthy of causes. Just as God had a grand purpose for Mary, he also has wonderful plans in mind for you and for me, even this Christmas. But we'll never know it if we allow ourselves to be spent on other things. So prepare differently this Christmas and willingly practice restraint. Number two, preparing differently means we, we take time to wonder. Take time to wonder. I believe Mary was a contemplative of sorts. She was a deep thinker and a wonderer. 
And she really took things to heart and, and pondered their meeting. In verse 29, Mary wonders what the angel could mean. Now, I doubt Mary had ever seen an angel before, let alone one who came specifically to visit her. And so standing there, right, probably trembling, taking it all in, she, she takes the time to really think about what it could all mean before she responds. An angel? Come to visit me? Is this for real? Favored woman, the Lord is with me. What is this angel getting at? If you know the Christmas story well, you know that Mary often stopped to ponder and to wonder about all the incredible things that were happening to her and the, the things that people were saying about Jesus. And because Mary regularly took the time to, to ponder the things of God in her life, she was better prepared to appreciate the great mystery and marvel of it all. Because Mary took the time to wonder, she was able to experience the true wonder of Christmas, the wonder of God. So if we want to experience the wonder of Christmas, we need to take the time to wonder about and to, to ponder on the things of God. When is the last time that you sat down quietly and really pondered what it means that, that God loves you so much that he left the great throne of heaven to be born as a little baby in a lowly manger? When is the last time you read the Christmas story with your kids or your grandkids and then sat back to, to just watch and listen as their little inquisitive minds wondered about it all? Did you encourage them? Did you join in with them? You know, too many of us believe that when the Bible says that we should have faith like a child, we think that it's telling us we should just simply believe without any question whatsoever. Well, I don't know about yours, but my kids used to question everything, right? They questioned a lot of things. Daddy, why is the sky blue? Daddy, how does the sun stay in the sky? Daddy, what's a manger? Daddy, how come I can't see God? Daddy, how do we hear from God? Daddy, why did Jesus have to die? My kids asked lots of questions. I, I'm sure your kids do too. But here's the thing. My kids trusted their daddy for the answers. You see, I, I think that faith like a child means that we take time to question and wonder about the wonderful and marvelous things of God. And then we trust our Heavenly Father to show us the way. Like Mary, our wondering and pondering doesn't jeopardize our faith. It deepens it, and it draws us closer to God. But the key is we must trust God for the answers, even if he doesn't give them to us when we want them, even if he doesn't give us all the answers at once. True wondering comes from a, a heart that wants to truly know and to learn. And when we take the time to ponder on the things of God, our faith only grows. So this Christmas, be sure to spend some time wondering and pondering the great mysteries and blessings of God. And the final point is preparing differently means we willingly accept God's interference. Now, this was not a little thing that God was asking of Mary. This mission, should she choose to accept it, would be putting everything at risk, even her life. And Mary had a good thing going right now. She came from a good family with a good reputation, and she was finally of marrying age, and her wedding would be coming soon. She was engaged to a good man, even a descendant of King David. 
And Joseph was a skilled carpenter, a man in a good trade, and he would always be able to provide for them one way or the other. And oh, how she dreamed about her wedding day and how everything would be just perfect. I'm sure she imagined a a big Jewish wedding with the family priest in the synagogue in town where, where she had grown up. And all of their family and friends would would be there together to celebrate. And she would, of course, be wearing the most gorgeous dress that her family could afford. And they would party for days until all the food and the drink drink ran out. And and finally, she and Joseph would ride off into the sunset together to, to start their family and to live happily ever after. Sorry. So as she thought about her dreams and her plans, I bet she began to realize that a pregnancy outside of wedlock would, would jeopardize all of this. It would ruin her dreams and her reputation, maybe maybe even her life. By law, she could be stoned. And what about Joseph? How would she explain this to him? There's no way he would marry her now. If Joseph left her and she wasn't killed, what, what would she do? Would her family take her back? What if they didn't want her after this scandal? How in the world would she raise this child alone? How would she care for him? And what would it mean when the angel said that she'd be overshadowed by the power of the Most High? That sounded a little scary to tell you the truth. So obviously I've I've taken some license here, but... I would bet I'm not too far off. Like any young woman, I'm sure that that Mary had great dreams about her life and her future. But becoming the mother of the long-awaited Messiah before she was even married would change everything. Nothing would be the same. Now all of a sudden, Gabriel's greeting takes on deeper meaning. Do not be afraid, Mary. Nothing is impossible for God. Time and time again, I've I've seen it. When God steps into our lives, we, we freeze up like a deer in headlights because we're afraid of the changes that God might ask of us. Rather than welcome God in and embrace what he wants for our life, We ignore, delay, question, and seize up, afraid and unwilling to let God redirect our course, our lifestyle, our habits. Faith is not the the safety net or the crutch that some people say that it is. In fact, real faith is risky business, and only the truly brave and daring are willing to fully embrace it and to live it out. Mary was one of the brave and the daring. She chose to be the Lord's servant instead of serving her own ambitions or anyone else's. Trusting God to provide, Mary willingly accepted God's interference in her life and surrendered to everything that God wanted to do. I'm the Lord's servant, Mary responded. May everything you have said about me come true. What I know about you, about each one of you, is that God is at work in your life right now. You are special to God, and he loves you and wants a close relationship with you. 
He wants you to be a part of his everyday work in the world. And he has a part for you to play that is just right for you. But the question for today is, are you willing? Are you willing to put some restraints and boundaries in your life so that that you might save yourself for what's really important? Are you willing to take the time to really wonder about God and ponder the depths of his love and sacrifice for you? Are you willing to be brave and daring and take the risk to truly follow Jesus and accept God's interference anytime, anywhere? This Christmas, dare to be different and you just might truly encounter the greatest gift of all. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God of heavenly angels and wondrous deeds, how incredible it is that you chose to become one of us in the person of Jesus. Thank you for sending us a Savior, the promised Messiah. And thank you for Mary and her obedient faithfulness, her willingness to be used by you for something she could not fully comprehend in that moment. Make each of us more like Mary, O oh God. Give us restraint when we need it. And slow us down enough so that we have time to ponder your wondrous ways. And give us servant hearts that we will make way in our busy lives and schedules for you this Christmas. And may everything you have said and promised come true. Amen.
Well, speaking of uh, taking a risk to do things differently, I do have a special announcement I want to want to share with you all. I'm going to invite uh, some of the SPRC members. That I think they said they wanted to come up and join me. Thank you all for coming up. And I want to thank uh, District Superintendent uh, Don Han, Reverend Dr. Don Han, for being here with us today. Thank you as well. Thank you all for being a part up here with me. I'll wait for Jean. <laughs> well, today I am announcing that I will be leaving our church. My last Sunday will be Christmas Day, December 25th. I'll be starting a new appointment uh, come January 1st. Now, the details of the new appointment haven't uh, totally been finalized yet, so I can't say more on that. But I can say that this was not an easy decision for me. I've wrestled with it for several months now, praying hard. However, I, I do believe that God is leading me in a new direction, one that will enable me to, to make disciples of Jesus Christ with even more focus. I care greatly for this congregation. It has been a joy and a privilege to get to know you to serve alongside you, and to be called your pastor. I arrived in September 1st, 2020, just a few months into the COVID pandemic. And the last two years and four months have been unprecedented. Together, we've had to face profound challenges, loss, and grief that have left their mark on us, professionally, personally, but we have emerged stronger, more resilient, and better adapted for ministry in the 21st century. That experience will forever bind us together, and I will not forget you. I've been more than delighted to see many new faces among us these last few months. Many of you are brand new to our church, and I have enjoyed meeting you and the, the conversations that we've shared so far. You have made this decision even harder for me. And I think what I'm most upset about is that I won't get a chance to know you better and to really become your pastor and friend. And for that, I am deeply sorry. And to the folks online, I may not know all of your faces and names, but, but I know you are there. You are part of this conversation, uh, part of this congregation in tangible ways. You make up about half of our attendance. And so I'm glad when, when you've, we've been able to offer church uh, for you all this time. Every week I feel your presence and I'm thrilled every time you, you put something in the chat or interact with one of our hosts. And I have done my best to see you through that camera and to make you feel welcomed with announcements and comments meant specifically for you. Over the next few weeks, I want to invite you to join me in person, if at all possible, so that, that we might worship the Lord together face to face before I leave. And finally, I'd like to say thank you to the staff. It has been a great privilege to, to serve this church alongside you. We have accomplished a lot together in just a little over two years. And I will be forever grateful for your loyal support, your flexibility, and your openness to try new things and to see things from a different perspective. You know, being the pastor can be a lonely and difficult thing sometimes. But you all have made it so much better with your friendship and your love. I feel like we've helped each other to become better at our jobs, better people, and better disciples of Jesus. And I hope, staff, you all feel the same. This church is blessed to, to have each one of you, staff, and I will miss you dearly. Denise, thank you for your loving heart and your bright spirit and your willingness to be forthright and, and direct with me. We make a great team. 
Gail, your administrative and accounting, accounting skills are amazing. Thank you for helping me to stay organized and to, to sound like I know what I'm talking about when it comes to all that financial stuff. And Doug, you're one of the best music directors a church and pastor could ask for. Thank you for your willingness to always do what's needed no matter what. You know, one day my claim to fame is going to be that I got to work with the great Doug Burian, XO of the president's own marine band. <laughs> Hoorah. <laughs> and Kim, thank you for your leadership of our preschool, especially through the pandemic. More than once I sought your advice on how to handle COVID-related issues with the larger church, and you were always helpful. And I have appreciated your perspective on a lot of things. Kim, thank you. And Jenny, what a talented musician you are. Your heart for the Lord and worship is evident when you play. And I will miss worshiping with you. Peter, Stephanie, Wendy, Gary, thank you for stepping up to become our very first production crew and keeping our sound and video and church online running smoothly every Sunday. You literally have helped me to look good and sound good. And, and that takes a lot of talent. <laughs> and thanks to all of you who have given of yourselves to, to make our church a light in the community and a sign of hope in this world. My prayer for this church is that you do maintain a focus on, on loving God and neighbor and making disciples of Jesus Christ. Beginning January 1st, there will be an interim pastor a sign uh, to you all. And the SBRC will be announcing more details about this person later this month. I'm going to invite Lisa. Would you pray for us, Lisa? Thank you on behalf of the congregation for your service here the last two years. I also want to thank Debbie and Natalie and Evan because we know it's just not the pastor that says yes, but the family. And, and the sacrifices the family makes. I know you all came in at a difficult time, and we just want to say that we're grateful for you. And glad you became a part of our church family, and know you will always be a part of our church family. Thank you, Lisa. Let us pray. Oh, holy and, and loving God, we thank you for your servant, Reverend David, uh, for, for joining us during this time. We are grateful for his leadership throughout the pandemic, uh, an unprecedented, difficult time for our church, and, and we are grateful for his gifts of helping us to see us through and back to the thriving church that we are today. We are grateful for his gifts and his passion for discipleship, and, and we know that he has made us um, really think and, and know who we are as disciples and who we are as the church at Clonell. We, we pray for our church um, through this transition. We know, God, you have big plans for not only Reverend David, but big plans for our church. And you hold us all in the palm of your hand. And pour down your blessings upon us and in this Advent season of expectant hope, we know that your love through Emmanuel, God with us, Jesus Christ, will light our way. And in the, all this, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lisa. I do want to remind you that uh, we will have coffee and snacks in the fellowship hall. Uh, if you'd like to stay around a little bit for that, if you're able. And uh, if you'd like to know more about our preschool ministry, uh, Kim and Jan will be out in the hall. Uh, you can greet them and, and ask them uh, any questions you'd like. Let us stand and uh, sing together our last hymn, Go Tell It on the Mountain, number 251 in your hymnal, or the words will be on the screen. Thank you, SPRC. <laughs>
Go in peace, everyone, and have a wonderful week. Thank you.